Cooking Up Your Brain. Welcome to Cooking Up Your Brain. In these videos, I'll be taking a deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of the human brain using random questions and anecdotes. Click up there if you want a bit of background information about who I am and so on. This episode was inspired by a conversation uh, that I saw on Facebook and it kind of taps into the whole analog versus digital debate, which for some reason is still kind of going on. Guy the Geezer, who is mentioned in this as a prolific acid techno artist, and he releases a label called Raw, uh, does digital releases out of necessity. And Roland uh, is also another hugely prolific artist, internationally renowned. Both of them are kind of embroiled in this tete-a-tete -tete -tete with someone uh, lamenting the death of analog. Personally, I think the analog versus digital debate is a load of rubbish. Um, I've known Guy and Roland for years and have a huge amount of respect for them, so I ended up pitching in my tuppence. Uh, thing is, now that I look back, I think the guy has got a bit of a point. Where he's gone wrong is he's mixed up a couple of things, which actually a lot of people do, but his observations and underlying points really are bang on. He talks about compression and the MP3 standard being the problem. So get ready for it. Here comes the science. Essentially, what he is mixing up there is data and dynamic range compression. They're two very different things. When we talk about data compression in relation to the MP3 standard, it's really a set of instructions that you use to process the audio signal based on what we call psychoacoustic principles. Essentially what we see here or feel is not a complete direct representation of what the sensory organs are actually picking up. The world around us is horrendously noisy and our brains have to try and understand this. We've got these auto-correct, auto-sharp and auto-focus features and digital correction essentially, um, much like what you have on your mobile phone. In contrast, the dynamic range compression is more to do with the changes of the sound amplitude or on a millisecond by millisecond basis. And originally it was a process designed to stop electrical signals overloading and causing unwanted distortion on the recording. What most people don't realise is that we have a dynamic range compression built into our hearing system. When it comes down to it, data compression and dynamic range compression are completely different things, but they can have subtle effects on how we perceive sound. And really that's what a lot of people seem to pick up on. The bottom line though is that if you use them in moderation, the sound signal shouldn't be impacted significantly. It's only if you overdo it, either with data or dynamic range compression, it just sounds incredible. I said he made some valid observations there. Number one, the music should not be painful to listen to. I think there's two things that might be tapping into this. Firstly, for many, many years, there's been this trend for using increasingly extreme dynamic range compression settings to improve the overall perceived loudness of tracks. This is something that was called the loudness war. It wasn't due to the evolution of digital formats. It was due to competition, trying to get tracks to stand out. The second mechanism, which is probably more of a personal observation, is more to do with the relative increase in high frequency information that digital formats seem to give, and that's for various reasons. Well, in a live music setting, a large part of the experience is that feeling of the sub bass rattling your ribcage, and our hearing system is also biased towards the mid range of sound. There's a natural tendency to gauge the subjective volume on that basis. So, when you throw in the mix of poor monitoring setups that don't quite match with what the audience are hearing, performer and the DJs are going to want to ramp up the volume to what sounds good to them. The end result is that those high frequencies are going to get pushed up and they hurt a lot. But then how come vinyl sounds warm then? I mean that's a common thing that people say and I recognize it myself. It's easy to forget that actually that warmth was never intended. It was more of a limitation of the technology at the time and generally what people seem to recognize as warmth is actually a relative boost to the mid-range frequencies and a bit of gentle saturation that gets added 
and that brings in these extra harmonics. So in the case of vinyl records, there are two things that could also add to this effect. Warmth. Firstly, because you're physically limited by the width of groove and not wanting the needle to jump out, generally there's a compromise to shelve the very low or the very high frequencies. The second thing is that the raw sound of the vinyl is actually a bit rubbish. I mean, if you stick your turntable directly into a line input on your mixing desk, it doesn't sound great. Inputs labelled as phono, really what they are there for is because there's a boost circuit there. And if you follow that all through, actually what you want for analog warmth is the ability to process signals by cutting and boosting those problem areas and if you look at those analog emulation plugins in the market, actually a lot of them do just that. So digital versus vinyl, for me, it's kind of irrelevant. They're just different formats. They have different pros and cons to how you can interact with them as an artist. But that's beside the real point. We should be pushing for music and creative output to be valued more. We shouldn't be taking all the work and resources that goes into this for granted. You know, and that ties into a wider kind of issue of funding and developing the art. And this is a message that really I shout about as one of the main things for this Deviant Analog project that I run. It's trying to emphasize that the arts and the sciences really are two sides of the same coin. But I'll leave that for now and I'll rant about that later. I hope that kind of makes a bit of sense. If you like it, like and then subscribe please do comment if you think i'm talking rubbish if there's other stuff you want me to explore and try and explain then uh just tap down there and i'll try and get something out try and set up a patreon and send me money okay whatever. peace out catch you next time cooking up your brand